Hey there, nation. Welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back. This time with another edition of Cheap Shots. This one we're focusing a little bit differently this time. It's kind of like a mixture of a hobby side video a little bit because I am talking about some future miniatures I'm going to be putting in my army. But at the same time, I consider it a cheap shot though. <clears throat> and the reason why is because, as you can see here, I have a whole table full of military miniatures and military vehicles of different scales, and I plan on using these as proxy for Warhammer 40,000 vehicles uh, for our Longest War uh, series. And as you can see, it's a nice, huge haul of some used miniatures that we have here, of some military uh, vehicles and things. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about a little bit about these, exactly what I plan on using them for, for various different uh, armies and what kind of miniatures I am planning on using them for. So we'll talk about that. And at the same time, we'll have a little bit of a discussion about, you know, the idea of using proxy miniatures inside of your armies for uh, various war games. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this video on a roll. So first of all, Let's go ahead and talk about the haul we got real quick. So first of all, one of the uh, vehicles I got was a Leopard. It's an A4 model. That's actually uh, the main battle tank that's used by a lot of European militaries around the world. We also have a Leopold railgun. That was a railgun that was used by the Germans during World War II. A huge tracked cannon that fired uh, shells the size of Volkswagens. On the top there, we also got ourselves a German Tiger tank as well, which is also really deadly for World War II. We have ourselves an armored car as well from World War II as well. We also have here on the bottom, we have a uh, armored car from World War II as well. Another one that was created by the, uh, uh, sorry, not World War II, I believe this is modern, it might be. Actually, you know what? I'm really not sure what time period this is from. It might be from the modern time period, but I have uh, this armored car to use that for that as well. I have a Sherman miniature for a World War II style tank, so we have that. We also have this old one here, the Suma. Uh, uh, this one's a, kind of a really old tank as well. It looks a lot like a Hellhound, and that's exactly what I plan on using it for uh, for my Imperial Guard army that we have here. I have a Huey Hog, of course, it's just like another uh, helicopter, as well as a uh, Benjamin Schmidt BF-109. We also have a Falkwolf TA-154, as well as a Fal uh, Falker Wolf Condor. So these planes, as well as a combination with this Phantom F-4, I might be using for either my Imperial Guard or for my Space Marines Flyers. Just do a little bit of, con you know, some conversion work on them to make them look like more like modern space fighter looking type things. And of course, this big huge honker one, M24, uh, M247 Sergeant York anti-aircraft gun. So we have that as well. So these are the miniatures that I managed to get from a haul that I found in a garage. So I was able to uh, get some of those out as well. Um, obviously, I'm planning on using this big boy here to possibly be a Bane Blade if it's large enough. So I'll try to use that as well. Same thing with this tank as well as this tank. I'll probably use those guys as, um, what you call it, Lemon Russes if I can. Uh, there's Leopold, probably I can use it for like one of those, uh, I think it's called a Basculus, I think it's called, it's that huge cannon that uh, the uh, Imperial Guard guys get to use as well. I already talked about this one in the back, I plan on using it for a Hellhound to shoot flamethrowers, or maybe a Demolisher um, Lemon Rust, that way I have a little Lemon Rust squadron, that'd be kind of cool as well. I plan on turning that armored car as well as this armored card into Toroxes or Toroxes Primes, so that'd be kind of cool. And this one back here, because it is kind of a big tank, I might use it to another Bane Blade as well. And uh, you know, just kind of do some conversion work with these, and kind of use them up. I'm not sure if about these flyers. I might be able to pull some of these off for like some spa uh, space wing type vehicles, or maybe Imperial Guard flyers. I'm kind of open the open them there on that part as well. And uh, that's pretty much the haul that I plan on doing with these ones as well. So with that being said, and with the miniatures talked about, what we're gonna use these for. Let's go ahead and talk about the discussion of using proxy miniatures. All right. So as I said before, like I said, I'm gonna use all these for proxy miniatures for Warhammer 40,000. I plan on putting these together and also converting them to make them look a little bit more 40 hammer, uh, 40k-ish by adding some guns and things to them and also you know, adding some bits and bobs to kind of make them look a little more futuristic. But since I'm using these for proxy miniatures, let's go ahead and talk a little bit of discussion about how do you as the audience feel about using proxies in armies, miniatures that are not the actual miniature from a line of manufacturers and using for a war game. You see a lot of proxy miniatures because, well, for one thing, these things are cheap. Uh, for example, with these miniature kits that I managed to get, um, they didn't really cost me anything really. I just kind of had to scrounge them out of a garage and use them. So I got these pretty much for free, which is pretty awesome. And uh, so, how do you guys feel about it? I mean, the real reason why anybody really proxies anything is because uh, either one, the original model that they want to proxy it with is cheesy looking and they like the new ones they use instead, or two, like in my case, I'm a cheapskate, so I plan on using those instead. 
and that's the main reason why most people usually proxies because of uh, the costs associated with that as well. Now I know what some of you guys might say. You might be like, oh, well, what about Commander Cheapskate? What about you know playing at tournament games? And oh, Commander Cheapskate, what about playing at like Games Workshop stores and things of that nature? Well, the closest Games Workshop store to me is about 500 miles away, so I have a doubt that I'll be ever be playing at that store. So that's one. And two, gaming tournaments. I mean, I don't really go to gaming tournaments really. I just you know if I do go to one, it's at my local gaming store. No one really cares if you use proxies. Well, let's put it this way: the store owner doesn't care if you use proxies and I mainly just you know kind of play in my house is basically what I do with these so that's what I plan on doing it now I know some of you guys might be upset because you might be purists who believe in just buying all you know totally legit official type things and it might irk you that your you know opponent is bringing proxy stuff to it but you know like I said before put your discussion on the table you know tell us what you guys think I know I, I know when I play against some more games they get kind of upset that I decide to use proxy models but I just kind of tell myself the reason why they're upset is because I saved a bunch of money and they didn't and after all if you don't think I'm using proxy miniatures in my armies, I mean, I'm not sure you're watching. The, the screen name is Commander Cheapskate, for God's sake. So you should be able to know who that is all about anyways. So anyways, like I said before, you guys, if you want to, you know, have a little discussion in the bottom with some comments. Tell me what you guys think about using proxies for miniatures. For me, I'm just sure I'm okay with proxies. So long as like the miniature kind of resembles or something that's close to resembling, you know, uh, what you're talking about. So for example, like don't use like a goblin miniature to represent a dragon, for example. I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of ridiculous. But, you know, but if you have a dragon sized miniature that looks like a monster and you want to call a dragon, I'm down with that. I don't really care about that. That sounds pretty cool to me. So yeah, tell me what you guys think about that. So this is another good way for you guys to save money as well. If you're worried about paying expensive prices for like, um, you know, futuristic or modern military type vehicles, just go down to your local hobby shops and get yourself some cheap model kits. I know some of these uh, T uh, Tamiya type style uh, model kits will go for a pretty affordable price, usually about $20 to $30, depending on what kind of models you're getting. And of course, and more importantly, what scale you're getting at. The scale that all these vehicles are at are at 135 scale. So it's, uh, I put my 28 millimeter miniatures against the 40K. They look pretty good. So it looks like it's a pretty good scale, but you know, you can try to mix and match and try to figure which one looks out for you. So yeah, this is what I plan on doing for my next big project, is putting these together and start transforming some of these into some futuristic Warhammer 40,000 vehicles. All right, you guys, that's good to do for this one. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is always important to us. Also check us out on Instagram, Google+, as well as Facebook and Blogger for all laser grades what we're doing for a hobby. That's good to do for this one, you guys. As always, see you guys in the next one, and put those comments in. I want to hear what you guys got to think about it. Peace out, you guys.